Okay, so we're gonna learn a simple layer by layer method to solve the Megaminx. So easy that a three-year-old can do it. In order to use this method, you need to know how to solve a three by three Rubik's cube. So if you don't know how to do that, don't go any further because none of this will make any sense. We're gonna solve this Megaminx with a layer by layer method. Always keeping white on the bottom and gray on the top. And we're gonna solve this, the first layer, the second layer, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and the seventh layer, the top layer, is the last layer. So in order to do that, what we need to do is solve the white edge pieces forming a white star on the bottom. That's equivalent to the white cross on the Rubik's 3x3. So in order to do that, we're just going to look for um, white edge pieces and we're going to position them correctly. So this one here is pretty, pretty simple. So I have the red white and it's solved. So let's look for another one. So here's the, the purple white. So I'm just going to move it over and get purple touching purple and then spin this down. So the white touches white, purple touches purple. So those two are solved. Let's just look for a, another one. So here's one, it's uh, the yellow white. Notice it's, it's flipped wrong, it's oriented wrong. So what I have to do is, is move it up and then just flip it. Yellow touching yellow, spin it down. Same method we use on the Rubik's three by three. Um, so here's, a, um, here's the white green. So it needs to go down here again, that's wrong. So what I need to do is flip it so the green touches green, spin it down to the white. So here we've got the, the blue white. So I can move this all the way around the Megaminx all the way around here. Or what I can do is I can spin it down here. That's going to kick this out. So what I want to do is move this empty spot over here, spin it down. Now it's correct relative to all the colors. So if you're familiar with the Rubik's, you already understand that concept. So now we have the white star on the bottom which is equivalent to white cross. So the next thing we need to do is solve the corner pieces. We got a lucky, uh, a lucky insert here. So that one's correct, it matches. Now here's another one. So we're gonna look for any corner piece with a uh, white. That needs to go down here. So for example, this, uh, this white, yellow and blue needs to go here without messing this up. And all we're gonna do is our simple three by three, slap the white to insert the corner. So if you're familiar with my tutorials, you understand that. There's other ways to insert it. I'll show the other ways as we go around, but that's the uh, that other one go. Okay, we want this guy. All right, so now what we can do is move this, move this to the top, run it over here, and then bring it down. That's where it needs to go. So again, it needs to go here without messing that up. So one way to do it is to slap the white. The other way is if you're familiar with just bringing the empty slot up and backing it in, that's fine too, whatever you're familiar with. And then of course, if you know F2L, you can solve the second layer at the same time if you know how to do that. Uh, this is not an ideal case for a beginner, but so I can insert this right here, but I know I can connect these two together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And now they're connected and I just back them in. One reason you wanna know how to back um, pieces in instead of just slapping the white is because if you happen to come across two that are already connected, you don't wanna split them to insert that. You wanna keep them together. So bring the empty slot up, back it in and solve it. Uh, okay, so now we're looking for any corner with a um, white piece. So this one goes here. So it's a white, green, purple. It needs to go right here. So it's inserted. So now that's all of the first layer, as you can see. So that's all the edges and the corners. So now what we want to do is work our way around and solve the second layer. So some of these we got. Um, but what I recommend we do is let's start from the orange side. We're going to do that throughout this and there's, there's going to be a reason that's going to make more sense later. But right now, just trust me. So start here. This one's already solved. So let's work our way to the right, turning the Megaminx clockwise. So now we're looking for the, uh, the yellow blue edge piece to solve. So we're just going to look around for it. Here it is. So what I want to do to get that over here, I'm just going to move it to the top. Anytime I, I move something to the top and I turn aside, I always return the side. So for example, when I move this to the top and kick it over, I'm going to return this back to normal. That's not always necessary, but it's a good habit. I'll explain more about that later. So now what I want to do is this edge piece needs to go down here. What I want to do is just turn it till it matches one of these. So it doesn't match that. So let's turn it over here and it does match this. So now we just use our layer two insert we learned on the Rubik's three by three. So blue touching blue, yellow away from yellow, and then this corner will go up and chase it. All right, it ran away because it's a special rabbit. How do you catch a special rabbit? Unique up on it. That's how it grabbed it. So blue red, we're looking for a blue red. Where is it at? Right here. So same thing, I want to move this to the top. And then I'm going to spin it until I match one of these. It doesn't match that, it matches this. Okay, so we need that to go here, right there without messing this up. So how do we do that? What we're going to do is we're just going to um, 
take this out and connect it with that. So blue touching blue, run away from red, take the corner up, chase it, it ran away, we come back, slap the white. And as soon as we do that, it's gonna connect and then we insert. I'm gonna show another method on the next one. We're gonna keep working to the right, turning the Mega Mix clockwise. We need a red green. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna move it to the top. Now, we're gonna spin red green down until it touches one of these. So not that one touches this. If it was flipped and the green was here, then I would put it there. It's just, you know, you just gotta match them. All right, so now red touching red, green away from green. Instead of making the corner go that way to chase it, I'm gonna go the opposite way. Then when I return this, it connects right there. So, and then I'll back that in the empty slot. So that's a, it's good to know both methods because sometimes uh, you get lucky and you have a corner and edge paired and you don't want to break them up using the first method. Okay, so now we need a green, purple right here. All right, so green touching green, purple away from purple. We're going to do that same method again. Now they connect, and in order to insert it, I can't just do that because it messes that up. So what I do is I kick it over here, bring this empty slot up, back it into the empty slot, solve it. Okay, so that is all of layer two. So that's exactly like the Rubik's Cube. You should be able to do that with no help at all. Um, so now we're going to go back to the orange side. We're always going to work from the orange side. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve layer three. And in order to do that, I'm looking for the orange, purple, and yellow with that. All right. So it's right here. And you can see I have the orange, the orange, purple, yellow in the right place, but it's flipped wrong. So that may seem like it's a difficult problem to solve, but it's actually really simple. All we need to do is move it back to the top and turn it to where orange touches orange. And then it's solved. So it's that easy. Um, now what we want to do is we can go around and solve the third layer corner on all these, but I find it easier if we go ahead and solve the fourth layer edges while we're here. So I'm going to start with the one on the left, then the one on the right and then we're gonna work our way to the right. So if I start here, I need the orange purple. This needs to go here without messing this up. So how can we do that? That's pretty simple. All we're gonna do is hide this corner piece, solve this edge, and then just return the corner piece. It's that easy. While we do this, we're always gonna keep white on the bottom, gray on the top. We're never gonna make a new bottom. That just adds to too much confusion for a beginner and you're gonna mess everything up. So we solve that. Next, we have to solve this one. So we need what? The orange yellow. So I'm going to put it on the top, turn that back. All right, so now we have the orange yellow. So it needs to go right here, right here without messing that up. So how do we do that? All we're going to do is hide these two pieces that we've already solved. We're going to solve that edge and then just return this. So now third layer, fourth layer solved. And then we're going to work our way to the right. So now we're looking for um, green, yellow, blue, which is right here. So it's in the right place, but it's flipped wrong again that's really easy for us to solve. We can just turn it like that, and it's right. Now we need to solve this edge and this edge. So we're looking for a green, yellow. Where is that? Okay, so that's over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move it to the top. All right, so now I've got green, yellow. It needs to come down here without messing this up. So all I'm gonna do is hide this, solve this edge, and then return this corner. So now I need the green blue, it's right here. Uh, let's say for example, I had it like that. So that's not right because I need the green touching the green. So I'm gonna move it over here with green touching green. So now it needs to go down here without messing this up. So that means I have to hide this. But when I do that, now I'm messing up some work I've already built. So I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna destroy my progress. So we have a real simple solution for that. To get this here without messing any of this up, all I'm gonna do is hide this piece, hide this piece, solve this edge, then I return this, and then I return this. It's pretty easy to return it without memorizing because you're just matching things back up. So it's uh, it may seem a little confusing at first. It's a really simple concept that you'll get. You'll get it pretty quick. Okay, so pink, blue, red corner. That's what we're looking for. Where is it? All the way down here. So I'm gonna put that on the top. Remember, gray stays on the top, white stays on the bottom. Now that it's on the top, I want the pink touching pink so that I can spin it down here. Uh, now the piece I need is trapped right there. So what I'm actually gonna do is uh, I'm gonna untrap it. You can do that a number of different ways. That's one way, but. All right, so now I've got pink touching pink. Blue needs to come down here. In order to do that, I'm gonna hide this piece, solve that, return this piece. Now I need Okay, so now we're on our last unsolved um, layer three and four block. So I need the blue, green, purple. 
right here right here so blue green purple so we can see it doesn't match that way and if I move it here it doesn't match that way so what am I gonna do um, just kick it around just keep kicking it kick it like a can till it till it's the way you want all right so now that matches here and I'm looking for this edge blue green where it's at two turntables and a microphone all right blue green is flipped wrong that's okay so I'm just gonna put it here I need to hide this but now I'm all the way back around to some solved work this is the first time we've worked to the right that we've had something solved here and the reason we did that was because we didn't want to have to worry over here we always made this the unsolved portion but now that I'm actually got some solved work here I will have to be mindful of this and um, and not mess that work up okay so let me uh, so let's start back so I need this blue to match so I'm gonna match that blue there okay I need to hide this to solve this but I don't want to mess that work up so what I'm gonna do is turn that work to hide it then when I hide this that none of that matters I solve this I put this back I put this back and then I just have to remember to put this back I turned this to flip the edge was the only reason so now my last edge in layer four so blue purple where is it's right here all right so I'm gonna kick it on the top all right so there's uh, blue touching blue purple needs to go down here so I'll hide this hide this solve return return now let's just go around make sure we don't have any mistakes solved 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 back to start all right so now we've got layer one layer two layer three and layer four solved whether you realize it or not you actually already know how to solve layer five and six you, you've done it you've done it on a three by three and you know how on this mega minx so back to Einstein's all things are relative so relatively speaking layer five and six is no different than layer one and two so if you think about this if you pretend that this yellow is the white bottom that's no different than layer one and two and, and you know how to solve layer one and two so we're not going to actually turn it and make the yellow the bottom because it, it offers too much confusion for beginners to make mistakes and, and ruin their work we're going to keep white the bottom we're going to keep gray the top but we're just going to think about yellow as the bottom so if we think about yellow as the bottom we just need this yellow corner to go here and we know how to do that we learned it on the three by three and we've done it down here so that's solved we can go ahead and solve all these corner pieces for layer uh layer five and five but if you happen to see the edge or if you happen to see an easy f2l go ahead and grab it so i know this edge goes here right there so i'm gonna go ahead and grab it so green touching green orange away from orange all right now we're gonna move to the next one so I know I need a blue here so here's the blue all right so I can solve this uh, blue just like that just think of it as the white so you can slap that side to solve it or you can you know move the empty slot up and move it in uh, whichever method you like if I happen to see the green and pink up here I'll grab it but I don't so I'm just gonna move over to the next one so the next one's red so um, to solve it I can just solve it like that and then now what I want to go is look for any edges that aren't solved so I had a few that I solved but I have some uh, layer six that I did not solve so for example let's see if we see the green pink we do so pink touching pink green away from green that's one method we'll use the other method on the next one so right here this piece goes here so pink touching pink beige away from beige so this time instead of moving the corner towards it I'll move it away and then I turn it back it connects and then I move the empty slot up and I back it in whatever method you prefer there so now we're on the last layer which uh, a lot of people find difficult but it's actually really easy I've got a full in-depth tutorial that explains every aspect of this to a better degree of understanding than you probably ever thought was possible but I'm gonna blaze through this just because I have that really in-depth tutorial so the first thing we're gonna do is we want to flip all these gray edges up making a gray star that's equivalent to the yellow cross on the 3 by 3 so in order to do that I'm just gonna use a 3 by 3 algorithm what I call the line algorithm which is front right up right prime up prime front prime and then what that's going to make is an arrow and this is what I'm looking for okay so once I have this arrow that's equivalent to line on the 3 by 3 and again I explained that in depth in my last layer tutorial so I'm not going to go in depth right now but once we have this and that arrow is pointing to the right we just do that algorithm again front right up right prime up prime front prime and what that does is that flips these two edges and it gives us the uh, gray star so that's what we need now what we want to do is we want to flip all of these corners so the edge is facing up we're going to use a basic um, three by three uh, sequence that's going to rotate these 
you're going to mess this up if you're brand new to it. You will make mistakes, but it's just a practice opportunity, so don't worry about it. So just, first, just watch what I do, and then maybe rewatch it. But we're going to go down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. This is all messed up. That's okay. This is flipped. What I have to do is I have to bring the next one that's not flipped. This is where the math is involved. You always hear that's mathematical, but you don't have to understand the math. But here's where the math comes in. I have to do the same thing. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Once that last corner gets flipped, this will be fixed. So it doesn't matter how many you have wrong. I only had two wrong there, which I got kind of lucky, but sometimes you can actually use like some fish algorithms and uh here i've got three to flip you know so um you can use some fish algorithms i go over that in the last layer tutorial so we're not going to go through all that right now so now what we're going to learn is just one simple way to shuffle edges around all right there's a lot of different ways to do it but this one is so simple so now i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to shuffle this here this here and this here these two are solved so watch again in order to put this pink one here all I do is hide it and then I bring here over to the pink one okay now I want to trade that one so I just did and then now I want to put the last one where it belongs right there so it's really that simple so you can memorize that or you can just see what we're doing we're just hiding a piece and then putting in a new location pretty simple all right now these corners same thing we can learn them a lot of different algorithms or we can literally just look at this piece this gray orange and green needs to go right here between the orange and green so because I know it needs to go there all I'm gonna do is put it there so I hide it right there and then it needs to go right here so I'll take this one out and I'll put the correct one in its place so now that is solved all right so now I have the pink beige where does it go well the pink beige goes here so I just take this one out and it's solved so that one I just took out is pink green where does it go well it goes right here so I just take this one out and put the correct one in its place. And then now I have orange blue. Where does it go? Right here. So I'm just gonna take this bad corner out, put the correct one in. And then the last one is easy. It goes right here. And that's how easy the Mega Minx is to solve. If, if anything confuses you on the first few layers, you're gonna have to watch the video a few times. You, you're not gonna get anything the first try and you're gonna have to practice a lot. You'll make mistakes. Don't worry about that. It's just uh, practice opportunities. The more mistakes you make, the better you'll actually learn and understand. And that's the goal, is to learn and understand, not solve it once and put it on a shelf. Um, the other thing is if you struggle with the last layer, I blazed through that, and there's a few cases and scenarios that can be a little tricky. Um, just watch my last layer tutorial. Like I said, it, it'll really open your eyes, and you'll have a better understanding than you thought was possible. So we need to get away from trying to memorize things and copy people. We need to learn logical approaches and critical thinking. Man, I'm a white dog. Oh, wow, you got lucky on that one.